Having talked about the ergodic hypothesis, we can finally talk about the microcanonical ensemble. That is, we're finally ready to derive the behavior of a system in which we fix the number of particles, the volume, and the total energy in the framework of statistical mechanics. This is equivalent to talking about a system which is completely isolated from the rest of the universe, since we know that the total energy will be conserved. To do this, we will need the ergodic hypothesis, which is the hypothesis that we can describe a thermodynamical observable, capital F, as an average over a distribution rho of a dynamical variable lowercase f. We can think of justifying this by thinking that instead of having one system, we have an infinite collection of systems which can randomly be in any of these points of the phase space. And then rho will give us the probability of a system being in any of these states. In this case, we're talking about an ensemble, that is, a togetherness, a set of systems, all identical, but we can be in different states. In this average, we write dpdq, meaning that we're integrating over all the momentums pi and all the coordinates or the positions qi of all the n particles of the system. And for every particle, we have three of these momentums and positions because we're talking about a system in 3D space. So the focus of this video is use some hypothesis to figure out how does this raw look like. The three hypotheses we will need are as follows. So the first hypothesis is that raw is constant in time. We can justify this hypothesis by saying that our system will travel throughout all the bits of the phase space in which it can actually go during the time in which we perform our measurements. Now, this assumption is actually a little sketchy, and we can easily convince ourselves of this simply by thinking of the fact that if we're talking about a gas, this hypothesis actually means that we are considering all the possible states of the gas, including the ones in which, for example, all the particles of the gas are just in half the volume that they can occupy, or maybe in even a smaller space. We can clearly see that this is unreasonable. Uh, gases don't behave like that. The air in our room doesn't suddenly focus itself in a corner, leaving us breathless and then coming back together. Um, but we will return on this in a moment, and for now we just assume that rho is constant in uh, time. The next hypothesis is that the system will spend the same amount of time in all the points in the phase space in which it can actually go, which means that rho is constant not only in time, but also in P and Q. This basically means that the system doesn't have any preferences when it comes to deciding in which states to be, as long as that state is allowed. The third hypothesis that we will need is simply that the only requirement for a point in the phase space to be visitable by your system is that the point must have the right amount of, of energy. That is, we are saying that rho will be zero, that is, a system will never be in a given point in the phase state, if, and only if, the energy associated with this point will be different from the total energy of the system. I'm writing the energy associated to a given point in the phase space with h, because this is also the Hamiltonian of the system in that point. If you don't know what the Hamiltonian of the system in is, then don't worry, it's not really a concept that we will need that much throughout the course. For us, it's simply the energy associated with a given state of the system. Now, with these assumptions, taken all together, we can finally derive how the raw looks like. This means that we're saying that rho will be equal to a constant 
every time that the energy of a state is equal to the total energy of the system and it's going to be zero otherwise this means that rho as we've defined it is defined on a surface in the phase state that is all the points in which the energy is exactly equal to E but we will see that our future calculation will be much easier if we relax a little bit this assumption and therefore if we make the approximation of considering rho different from zero not if h equals e but if h is close enough to e which means that it will be in the interval e and e plus delta where delta is a small energy which by small I mean that it's small enough not to make any difference. And of course it will still be zero every time this bound is not satisfied. That is, it's going to be zero otherwise. Well, that's pretty much it. The only thing which is left now is to figure out what actually this constant is. We can easily understand that by remembering that rho is a probability density function, which means that it has to be normalized by saying that the integral in dp dq of rho is equal to 1. By using the definition of rho up here, we can rewrite this by limiting our integral to the domain of the phase state in which energy satisfies the condition E less than h less than e plus delta which is just this condition up here rewritten slightly differently and then we know that on this domain rho will be constant and equals to c now we can simply therefore we can define the integral gamma delta of E as the integral with the energy satisfying the condition which we just imposed of the P, the Q, all divided by H to the 3n where h is the Planck constant and then c will simply be 1 over gamma delta of e. We're simply putting this h factor here, this Planck constant raised to the power of 3n because we're interested in having a probability distribution which is non-dimensional just because it will be more convenient along the, our computation. Now since the p the q has the dimensions of an action, that is, of the product of a, a position and the momentum, we need another quantity which has this same dimension for every product dp dq that we all have. As you can see up here, we have 3n of these products, therefore we need an action to the power of 3n. And we might as well use a fundamental constant for it, which is just the Planck constant h. There's also um, a deeper explanation for this, which comes from the indetermination principle in quantum mechanics, but we're not concerned with that for now. Now that we have the probability density in the microcanonical ensemble, we will be able to face many interesting topics in statistical mechanics, including answering to some important questions like where does the second principle of thermodynamics come from, and also deriving all the other ensembles.